Hello and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into wife divorce husband after she started making more money. Come, let's explore these real life stories. We were together for eight years, which were mostly good, and we had four kids. Right after five years, I got a promotion at work, and it got into my head that my husband was dragging me down, or at least, holding me back from more success and a better life. We never had a lot of money, but with my promotion, I was making more than he was. I was working longer hours, and at the same time, his hours were cut, so he was at home more. I began to resent him because he was home and because he got to spend more time with our kids. Most nights, when I got home, they were already getting ready for bed, if not already asleep. After a few months of my new job, it was clear to me that things were not going well at home without me there. Some nights, the dishes weren't done when I got home, or the kids hadn't eaten, or whatever other things I could think of to be mad at him about. It really didn't matter. He kept saying that he would try harder, but it was hard being home all the time. That always made me really mad. In the next couple of years, things kept getting worse. My hours weren't getting any shorter, and his were on and off full-time. There was no convenient time for him to be working full-time because of my hours, but we also needed the money. Whenever he would tell me that he would get extra hours, I would always complain, and the fewer hours he worked, the more I complained that he wasn't bringing in enough money. Whenever he brought up the contradiction, I would tell him that he needed to figure it out. I knew it would bother him, so I started saying that a lot and for everything that I could. I really started resenting him, and I pulled away from him. I knew that it was hurting him, but I didn't care. If he didn't want to be hurt, then he should at least try to make me happy. I used that same logic to justify when I started talking to another guy at work. I thought he was just a friend, but talking at work turned into texting at home, then sending pictures and videos, and then trying to sneak some alone time with him. I knew it was wrong, but he made me feel so alive, and my husband hadn't made me feel like that in years. I was tired of being unhappy, and I was doing this for me. The worst was the night I came home at a reasonable time and found that he had cleaned the whole house, cooked dinner for the whole family, and picked out a movie for us to watch together. This would have made me swoon a couple of years earlier, but that night, I couldn't even look at him and pretended to be sick. I spent the rest of the night in bed while he waited for me, checked on me, and even made me different food and brought it to me in bed. It made me feel terrible, and then it made me feel angry that he made me feel that way. By the end of the night, I was texting with the other guy. Over the next month or two after that night, it didn't matter what he did, he was wrong just for breathing most days. He would get so upset at how I was treating him, and I would just wait to egg him on into losing it because I knew it would happen eventually. After most of the fights, he would apologize for whatever I told him he did wrong, if there was even something. But I never did. I would usually find a way to make him feel even worse. I knew that I was right because he was wrong, and that was all that mattered to me. I didn't even pretend that I cared when he found out about my relationship with the guy from work. It really destroyed me inside to see him holding back tears, but I wasn't going to let him see that. He was at his weakest, and that was when I chose to tell him that I wanted a divorce. I could almost hear his heart shatter inside his chest. He talked and fought and said we could work things through together. I wasn't really interested in fixing our marriage, but I mostly ended things with the other guy, only because I knew that I could get it back if I wanted it. I could see that he was trying, and occasionally, I would let him know. But for the most part, I kept being harsh to him for any and all reasons I could think of. I'm not sure how much the man could have done to make me happy besides finding a job that paid enough for me not to work at all. He said that he was looking, but looking and finding are two different things. It was around this time that I discovered this group and a few others. I started posting things about him from my perspective only, and I got so much positive feedback for how I was feeling, and I knew I was right. The more I posted, the more validation I got. It wasn't just me who knew my ex-husband wasn't worth keeping around, I had the whole internet telling me how terrible he was. I started saying awful things to him and even outright ignoring him. 
I was so confident with my own and everyone else's opinions that I contacted a lawyer and, within a couple of weeks, had filed for divorce. I continued to use this forum and a couple of others to validate my feelings and for encouragement to go through with it. Finally, it was done. It went pretty smoothly. My ex-husband didn't ask for much besides telling me not to get a divorce and to try to work it all out. I didn't care about that, though. He was broken, but I was free. I could do whatever I wanted without having to feel any guilt or answer to anybody. It was an amazing feeling of freedom. It didn't last long, though. In the first month after he moved out, I forgot to take out the garbage three times. There was also rarely a single clean dish, and the laundry sat in piles so long that I had to start doing the sniff test to see if it could be worn again. I also never saw my kids more miserable. My oldest had seen some of the messages from the other guy, and she knew my ex-husband still wanted to try to work it out. It didn't take long for her to stop talking to me at all, except to tell me when she wanted to go to her father's house. The others all told me they wanted to live with their dad too. I did my best to try to make them happy but ended up just buying them toys all the time and the happiness only lasted minutes. I was also having a lot of trouble with work. Being alone, I couldn't work all those extra hours that I was expected to. I finally gave in and started calling my ex-husband to watch the kids. He would always come over as soon as he could and he always asked me if I needed anything. When I would get home, I would find clean dishes and laundry and even dinner sometimes. He would never say too much after I got home. He would just say to call him if I needed anything else and leave. One night, he took out the garbage and brought it to the curb because it was garbage night and I forgot again. He always looked so sad when it was time to go. Finally, after a couple of months, my friends convinced me to go out on a date. It was for dinner and a movie and I was excited and hopeful. But at dinner, I started getting a feeling of overwhelming guilt. It got so bad that I ended up not even going to the movie. A week and about a million tears later, I was on a therapist's couch. I told her everything that had happened and started with the promotion that I got at work. She did not agree with me or with any of the encouragement to divorce that I got. I ended up in her office too and sometimes three times a week and the more that I talked to prove that I was right, the more that I started to see how wrong I was. It was truly heartbreaking. I don't know if I cried as much in my whole life as I did in the first month in her office. After about $2,000 of therapy sessions, I learned that my husband had his faults, but I realized that mine were so much worse. I did so many awful things and said many awful things that I wouldn't want to be with me, but he did. I still remember him asking me in the meeting with the lawyer to please not go through with it. I did go through with it, though, and then later bragged on here about how great it felt. It was so wrong, and now I can see it. A couple of weeks ago, I went outside with him when he was leaving the house. I asked him about getting back together. When he looked at me, his eyes were full of tears, and a couple went down his cheeks. He told me that he didn't know if he could. He said that the pain I had put him through was so much that if we were to get back together, I may just turn around and do it to him again. He said that he always thought I would realize how much he loved me and stop up until I signed the divorce papers and let out a big, over-exaggerated sigh of relief. He said that hurt him more than anything else and he doesn't know if he can ever trust me again. I don't blame him. I destroyed a man who, looking back, was a great husband. I deprived my kids of having a great father in the house with them and I took his kids away from him. And I, the one who pushed for divorce expecting happiness and a life of freedom, now spend all my free time sitting at home or sitting on a therapist's couch. Please, don't just take the advice of anyone about getting a divorce. If your marriage is bad, look at yourself first and see if you can make changes. This is advice for both men and women. Getting a divorce is not fun, being divorced is not fun, and seeing your husband broken and your children never happy because of your actions is the most painful experience that I can imagine. I wish all of you well and hope that you will give your marriage a second chance.